everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to Guided Listening. So it is the week before Christmas when I'm recording this. And so, you know, uh, I celebrate Christmas. New Year's is coming up. Of course, Hanukkah and Kwanzaa, it's the holiday season. So whatever you celebrate, I hope you're having a wonderful holiday. If you don't celebrate anything, celebrate something. I hope you get some time off or get to chill out or practice a little bit or something like that. Um, Christmas is particularly great because like uh, some unknown uh, fat guy sneaks into your house and uh, eats your cookies. So what's not to love about that? All right. So uh, staying with the uh, festive season, um, oh, Tannenbaum is what we're going to do. This is the Vince Guaraldi trio. Many, many, many of us, certainly from my generation, are going to know this from the Charlie Brown Peanuts uh, Christmas special back in the mid-60s, I guess it was. Uh, that has been replayed ever since. The Vince Guaraldi Trio. And I, I have such a hard time remembering these guys' names because I don't know their names. Fred Marshall on the bass and Jerry Grinelli on drums. Those are not names that I know from my eight years of college studying jazz and from decades and decades and decades of playing and teaching jazz. So these were West Coast musicians. They are great players. They recorded plenty, but of course we don't know them from the Blue Note albums and the Impulse, you know, all that stuff. So the lesson right there is how many great musicians there are that we've heard, right? Like I've heard these guys plenty, and yet um, they're, they're not celebrated up there with Philly Joe Jones and Paul Chambers or whatever. Um, and I've been talking with a lot of great older musicians about this, about all the cities in Canada where I'm from, in the United States, around Europe, uh, the great musicians that we never got to hear. They didn't really record. They didn't want to go on the road. They wanted to raise a family, right? They wanted to make a decent living, whatever it was. Great musicians that we did, never really got to know. So that's, it's sort of fascinating. And, you know, perhaps we can put, you know, some of these folks in there. So this is so swinging. I was talking to my son, who's a freshman at the University of North Texas, playing jazz tenor sax like I did back in the day. Um, I was telling him, hey, I need to do a guided listening. What should I do this week? We talked about maybe a Mingus tune. Uh, we talked about a couple things and we finally landed on this. And as we listened to it together, like, yeah, there's a lot here to, uh, to talk about. So I want to dig into it. And by the way, I want to say something. I'm always talking to you guys about jazz wire. Um, and you see me hit, sitting here with a saxophone all the time. And yes, I'm a saxophone player. Yes, I play some piano. Uh, jazz wire is not for saxophone. It's not a saxophone website. I don't give saxophone lessons there. Sure, topics of saxophone come up, but um, it's for all instruments. We have every instrument imaginable, including some not imaginable, such as we've had harp players on Jazzwire and banjo players and steel uh, guitar players and on and on. So um, I actually have a drum gig this week. I've, I'm a pretty good drummer. I've been playing drums for about 30 years. I had a bass gig last week, so I play electric bass, not, uh, not the real, you know, actual bass. Uh, but so I've got a lot of knowledge on those instruments. But again, I'm not teaching you how to play bass. I'm not, you know, that kind of stuff. Inside Jazz Wire, we're talking about the music and how we fit together and how we get going in our own personal journey. We talk tons about the harmony and the rhythm and the comping and everything else. So I hope you take the free trial and come in and see what I and the rest of the faculty are, are doing. It's not lessons for you on your instrument. It's talking about jazz and how you play your instrument fine. You play your instrument good enough. How, now, what do you do with your instrument inside the music? That's what Jazzwire is about. So I hope you come and check it out. Okay, so let's, uh, let's dig into this. So it's just trio. It's acoustic bass. It's drums. It's piano. And there's a lot of interesting moments. And I listen to it closer. Um, at the end of the piano solo, I'm 100% sure there's an edit. They literally had to cut the tape with a razor blade and glue it together. There's a little glitch in the time and in the sustain of one of the symbols. So there's an edit. Don't know what happened. Somebody screwed up. Something happened with the tape. You know, so some little funny thing that I've never noticed and I'm sure 999.99 out of a thousand people never noticed, but I'm pretty convinced there's that kind of funny thing there. So there's all these great decisions about what the bass player um, uh, and the drummer are doing, how Vince is playing, how ridiculously swinging this is. 
So let's jump into it. It's O Tannenbaum, which is O Christmas Tree. And you know, I remember when I was in second grade doing the Christmas play, I think I had to read something about this being a German hymn or carol or something or other. So second grade is a little far away at this point, but uh, thank you Germans for, uh, for this lovely tune. Here we go, the Vince Guaraldi Trio. Solo piano intro. And we're hearing jazz chords sneaking in. So, you know, we're not going to mistake this for, uh, you know, the church piano player or whatever. Or it's a hip church. And these are definitely, he's come up with a jazz progression. Three, six, two, five chords. Okay, listen to the bass player playing in a two feel. One, three, one, three. So he's not swinging yet. It is a very swinging feel, but he is not walking, let's say. How about the drums? Brushes. All right, and now we're swinging. So still on brushes, but the bass is walking. Let's actually go back and listen to that again. So we're gonna listen to the two feel and how great it feels. It's very swinging, but the two feel and the walking feel. The biggest difference is the bass player, right? The bass player here is playing half notes, kind of twice per measure, embellishing a bit. The drums are on brushes and the drums uh, stay on brushes. So really the only person changing very much is the bass. So here's our two feel. And it's the melody. And here's that shift. And. And you feel how it's kind of marching along now, right? That walking bass line, how compelling that is. That feel is so great. And Vince Guaraldi's playing all this fantastic material. His comping in his left hand is so swinging. He's playing lots of double time, lots of 16th note based material. Ah, and now the drums goes to the cymbal. Puts the brushes down, goes to the cymbal. And now it's even more swinging in earnest. It gets more swinging again in just a moment. And it's mostly quarter notes, right? Bass and drums, quarter notes. So, so it gets more swinging again here now. Check this out. So, a rim click on beat four. One, two, three. That rim click on beat four. In the last guided listening, we heard Jimmy Cobb do that. There's no better way to step on the gas with the swing feel. Um, to you know, kind of propel it without doing something huge or loud or uh, boisterous or whatever. So we've moved into the bass solo here. Such a great piano solo though. And that edit I talked about went by as I was talking. So, there's some cool moments behind the bass solo. It's hard to hear the bass solo, that's kind of historically true. So listen to the drums and the comping. And there's little moments where they start connecting. There comes up those offbeats. And so that was in the comping, but we heard Jerry on the drums doing that same thing, those little kicks. 
Is that something they rehearsed? It was so small and subtle. Maybe they fell into doing that on the gig and they did it on the recording, or maybe they were listening to each other. I think it's that, because I hear Vince Guaraldi doing it once or twice and then Jerry catching it. Oh, we're doing that? Yeah, let's do that, I gotcha. And again, just this strong, how simple that quarter note pulse is. And we still have that rim shot on beat four. Now, melody. Did you hear how it shifted back? What happened? Well, we went from sticks to brushes. We went from a walking four feel to now this two feel. And of course, we went from soloing sort of material to, uh, to the melody. But it's still so buoyant, right? It's, it's not heavy, it's not slow. You know, half notes could be very, very heavy and nasty sound, and this is swinging. Now they leave the harmonic progression they've been in the whole time. Cool, nice, rich ending chord. So I think most of us have heard that recording before. If you haven't heard it before, it's a classic whole album of, uh, of some holiday standards and then a lot of great music that Vince Guaraldi wrote. Uh, for the special. And actually, last year at this time, about 52 weeks ago, um, I did a guided listening on, you know, the very famous song he wrote called Linus and Lucy. And so you could look back on my channel, 52 weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the song is called Linus and Lucy, whether you can search on the channel and find it. But there's, you know, some, another cool recording from this album. So the nice thing is for the next five, six, seven years, every, uh, every Christmas season, we'll listen to another one of those tunes. Um, so many great things in that solo that I would sort of love to learn. He, he wasn't doing any fancy, you know, sort of taking it out, you know, crazy stuff. Because, of course, this is a family slash kids uh, TV show they're recording for. But, man, that was not dumbed down. Like, if that's happening in any jazz club on Earth tonight in the year 2023, that is burning, right? So, um, so cool that that got to be the music for, you know, a show in the first place, and then, of course, something that became such a cultural touchstone, you know, over all these decades. So wonderful that we get to hear that music and listening back. You know, one thing I noticed as I was listening to it, the sound of the drums is weird. Go back and listen and just, you know, find the track without me yakking over top. The, the piano is mic'd nicely. It feels like I'm hearing the piano directly, like I'm standing in front of a grand piano. The bass has this really nice sound. The, uh, the drums, I can hear the room. I can hear the hi-hat especially. The hi-hat's a little loud in the mix for me, and, and, and it's kind of a little harsh. It's almost like it's bouncing off a wall nearby. So the other two are intimate sounding, and the drums feels like it's around the corner in a, you know, in a machine shed or in a you know, parking garage or something like that. Um, so listen back and see if you can notice that. And, you know, of course, well-recorded, uh, you know, in the history of jazz, there's lots of well-recorded music. There's lots of not well-recorded music. It's very hard to get the, the sound of the bass to sort of project. And, of course, if you're riding in your car or something, the, the low end gets eaten up. So bass solos are historically tricky to hear. But, you know, these, these days, when I say these days, last 50 years, let's call it, people have figured out how to do a good job with amplifying the bass and making the solo, you know, something we can hear better. But listen back and, and see if you notice how the drums, the quality of the drum sound. And, um, and I'm not expert at that. I don't, I'm not a recording engineer, but I've been in the studio a thousand times. But um, sometimes, you know, literally where the drums are set up. Are they close to a wall or next? Is there a baffle there or not? Which way is the mic pointing? Is it just one mic on the drums? See, you know, I'm going to hypothesize there was like a, a mic on maybe the snare and the hi-hat, and it was kind of pointed too much of the hi-hat. So who knows? But uh, yeah, it just kind of stuck out to me that the drums, uh, you know, are not sort of sitting into the mix, the tonality of them, the way the others are. So 
things that occur to me as, uh, as I'm getting ready to do these guided listenings. So thank you for joining me on that. Um, really looking forward to this year coming up. Of course, it's the end of 2023. Going to keep doing these videos every Friday. It's been about 430 Fridays in a row. I've done a video for you guys, and uh, I love doing them. I learn a lot. I probably learn more than you learn getting ready and doing these things and trying to prepare and distill the information down. And, uh, and I'm really excited to work with more of you inside Jazzwire this year. We're, we're going to have some very cool announcements about uh, how Jazzwire is expanding in 2024. So stay tuned. I'll let you know about that. Grab the free trial and come in and look at what we're doing now. I'd be very excited to get to work with you, introduce you to the hundreds of people we have inside working together. Have a great week. Happy holidays. I'll see you next time.